sorry, this afternoon, I'm just nipping out to post something I sold on Vinted. This morning I did my my last Morrison's Hall failed miserably at the contents of this basket. No vegetables on offer again. And um, <laughs> I guess I consoled myself. I'm gonna get creative in the kitchen tomorrow because I have no new vegetables. I'm gonna make a big old sausage casserole because I've got some root veg left. Which will probably keep me going for a few days actually. Hopefully by the time I go shopping again on Tuesday there will be vegetables. But I'm determined to hold off. I'm going to post this in the package. Send. Beep. Yeah, I'm send. Yes. Small. Yes. Yes. Where is it? There it is. Done. Finished. Done. Right, let's go home again. Been having a look at the garden as well. Things are starting to sprout, but I'm not going to touch it yet. Looks like my walking onions are coming up, and the um, Purple sprouting broccoli, which I have in at the moment, is from two years ago. So I planted it two years ago, and I left it last year. The weird thing about was that in January my broccoli was coated in black aphids and that was the year that we had that really cold minus 8 degree temperature which I would have thought would have killed them but it didn't and yet this year where the temperatures have been so much milder not a single bug to be seen. So I don't know what's going on there, but I'm going to leave these two plants in because they're looking quite good and I can start using those leaves. So even though I'm out of kale and whatever, I can trim off a few broccoli leaves and put those into whatever I'm cooking. It's all cut and come again, it's the, it's the way it's the best way to do things. But I'm going to plant some new broccoli seeds, get some new plants on the go as well. So, just coming home now. A few garlic bulbs that I left in last year have sprouted. Blue bells are coming up. There's not a lot else here at the moment. Uh, the strawberry plants have survived. That's really about it by the looks of it. Um, that's all right, we're growing lots of new stuff as well. I adopted something off the street the other day, which, um, there's your video here. And I've decided that this is going to be a great thing to grow my potatoes in this year. Because it's got a little 
it's plastic, but it's made to look like um, like a woven slatted basket, which obviously it isn't. But that'd be great for drainage. Excuse the dark. Ooh. Um, yeah, so that's good. That's an extra pot, and that'd be, I think that'd be really good for my first crop of potatoes, my supermarket potatoes, which are chitting. And, um, they're sprouting slowly, and once they go in, I can put those in that basket, put some earth in, and then shore up the earth as they grow. And that'll be my first crop. So I think that's a pretty good start to, to the gardening year. It's a bit early yet to, um, to do anything outside. I'm going to wait until the last of the frosts have gone. We've had quite a cold weekend, actually. This morning and yesterday morning, the ice on the cars was quite obvious. Although, it has, um, it has melted quite quickly because the sun's been out as well. So we have blue sky and sun, but of course that makes it very cold. But, um... That's been, certainly gives that feeling of spring, which is great. Oh, spring, 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 it's almost here. Things are growing. My broad beans are looking quite excited by the prospects of spring. And I will probably get those out around mid-March. We'll probably be all right by then. We'll see how they get on. Lots of stuff to plant, lots of stuff to grow. Really excited about it. Cause I love growing stuff even though I don't have much space. It's nice to see what you can grow. I like the challenge and the exploration of seeing what will happen. And uh, yeah, so that's a nice little end of month. Little end of month update on a, a very, very cold but sunny, almost spring day. Get in there. Good morning, Wednesday morning, so guess where I'm going, oh dear, it's cold again today, yesterday, obviously it was Tuesday, yesterday morning, I got my, finally got my first market research survey this year. I've applied for loads of marketing research. It's really hard to get them. And I finally got one. They're good payers. So this one is, it was a 30 minute interview followed by some things that I have to do over the next two weeks, but it's very small amounts of anything, followed by a quick follow-up interview in two weeks. And for that, I make £80. Um, it's really easy money. I like the marketing survey. You earn a lot more money for less time. Although there's the amount of time that you spend applying, of course, but um, I think it's worth it. I wanted to add something about my Universal Credit meeting that I had on Monday. So we were talking about like the stuff that I'm doing and how to improve it and all blah de blah de blah. And I talked about how, you know, I've been trying to get more cleaning work, but um, people clearly need the work because... Uh, you know, literally, I would go in on a job that had just come through and I'd miss it. Someone else would get it. And it, that's fine. Someone else probably needs to work more than I do. Um, and so she tippy-tapped on her computer and said, Oh, well, there's lots of other places you could go to for cleaning work. And she was looking at the DWP job centre, their, their job sites, which I've looked at before and it's just horrible. It's full of crap jobs dead-end jobs, low-paid jobs for long hours and horrible work. But she tippy-tapped on her computer and 
found me some cleaning jobs said oh there's one here it's not far from you it's two hours a day 5 30 to 7 30 and I didn't even ask if that was morning or evening it was a business so I have a horrible feeling it was probably morning <laughs> I'm not getting up for that for two hours a day. My first thought was, well, A, this is going to be a PAYE job, which means I'm going to be tied to contracted hours, which means I'm not going to be able to do the visits home that I want because I won't get the, the time off. And I don't want it. If I do two hours every day, five days a week, that's tying me to a timetable that I've tried really hard to avoid. As it is, trying to do things like, for instance, car camping in between the other cleaning jobs that I have is already tricky because so I have to be around on Tuesday evening to clean. I have to be around on Wednesday to clean. And then I have to be around at the weekend to clean. And with the car camping, I would only do like two days. So I'd go in the morning on one day and be back by the evening of the next. The problem is that because it's car camping and I don't do it very often, my sleep patterns aren't good for that. And the problem is, more than anything, is that I am at an age where if I don't get enough sleep, I run into health problems. Minor, but enough to knock me off my perch. So if I don't get the sleep, the headaches kick in. The perimenopausal headaches. And it takes me three days to shift them. So if I go, for instance, let's say I've done my cleaning on a Wednesday. Let's say I go and do a car camp on Thursday. I go Thursday morning, I do my day, I do my night, don't have a great night's sleep, power through Friday and come home Friday and I've got a horrible headache. I still have to then get up the next day and do cleaning work. But because I've now started splitting two cleaning jobs at the same building over two days just to make it a bit more interesting I could shift it all to Sunday and have Saturday off but that doesn't mean that I'm going to be well enough so to speak so I have to plan everything out if I start doing two hours a day at some crappy cleaning job for all for the sake of just two hours a day that removes any chance of me doing anything and what statutory pay statutory holiday am I going to get on a two hour a day job not very much I'll have to see my parents once every six months my family once every six months you know what it's not worth it for such a stupid amount of time and a stupid number of hours and for that kind of job so I'm not going for something like that. I would rather stick with the agency and one or two extra cleaning jobs would be quite cool, but they need to fit in with the others so that I still have that couple of days where I can go and do cleaning work, um, camping trips and things like that. So ideally I would want a cleaning job on Tuesday because I'm already around in the evening for a cleaning job and I would say another one um, I could do a Wednesday afternoon or a Wednesday evening because I'm already cleaning on Wednesday so that could work or I could pick up another weekend job. It would depend on when they needed me. The cleaning jobs for the agency tend to be quite um, flexible because for the most part you're fitting in around people at home. 
And while some people are happy for you to come around when they're there, some would rather you, you came and cleaned while they were at work. That sort of thing. But I'll keep applying for jobs as and when they come up. But um, as I say, I've had four already this year and I've missed every single one. Um, I keep quite a tight area on cleaning because I'm not going to drive for miles just to do a couple of hours of cleaning work. It's ridiculous. It's just not worth it. Not for the hours and for the, the pay. I'm not driving for half an hour each way just for that. And the other thing that the lady mentioned when I went for the UC meeting is that, uh, you know, I've got until August, which is when I become like a normal UC applicant, although I do think they're going to chuck me off. And um, she said when they send you for work and they will then start making you go for PAYE jobs in whatever, at the moment I can be quite picky and choosy about it because I'm on that protected year and she said um, that you're expected to travel up to 90 minutes each way per day for a job um, and now she did say that, that they do that timing by public transport so if I was driving it I could be going miles and miles and miles and she was suggesting you know jobs that were 20 minutes, half an hour for me, but they're not worth it. Minimum pay jobs for a couple of hours a day. There's no point. The jobs I'm doing at the moment, I mean, two of the cleaning jobs, I walk over the road, and the other one is a nine minute drive, which is the one I'm on the way to now. And when you're only on like minimum wage, why would you go any further? This idea that just because it's a minimum wage job that you shouldn't stick your neck out, why should you? If they are only prepared to pay minimum wage, they should only expect min minimum, minimum work. And I found a good quote for that, so you'll get that as well. It's just ridiculous. Anyway. So I'm just going to say no. If I get if I get fed up with being, you know, if it gets to August and they don't throw me off of UC, I shall probably just close my claim because um, I don't think there's going to be any point in me being on it after that anyway. Because they're going to put me into full time work, make me drop everything else, and they don't care what type of job you have. They don't care whether you like it. They don't care if you're happy if you're getting a decent work-life balance. They just need the numbers. They need the statistics. They just want you off the records. <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for people that are stuck in the system that have no choice but to accept whatever they're told to accept. There is more to life than doing a job that you hate just to pay your bills and I it took me years to realize that because I was always under the impression that you were supposed to work whether you liked it or not regardless of how awful the job was because you had to have a house and pay bills etc and then you discover that's a bit of a lie you can do things differently but you're not taught that. Although I think people have kind of worked a lot of it out. <sighs> anyway, so I'm here for cleaning. And I am too early, basically. I've arrived way too early. I don't know what's the matter with me today. So I'm just going to sit here with the heat on and just keep on. And I'll catch up with you afterwards because I have to go somewhere else afterwards. So we'll have more chit chat time. So I'll catch you in a bit. Right, clean's done. And I've come out with one of those big IKEA bags full of more trousers and a coat to alter. I think most of her wardrobe doesn't fit at all. Um, not going to complain about the income. 
And it's nice to see people being able to wear clothes they bought. I mean, half the stuff she gives me still got the tags on because she buys it, it doesn't fit, and it goes in the wardrobe and it stays there. And she's given me a couple of pairs of things that she doesn't want anymore, that she's never worn. Impulse buys, I should imagine. For me to sell on vintage if she doesn't even want the money. In fact, there were three tops, two pairs of trousers, a couple of scarves. So we'll get those on to, um, on to Vinted tomorrow. Keep me nice and busy on Thursday. So now I am driving down to the next town to book my car in for its MOT and service towards the end of the month. Uh, as in March. I pay a service package and go down to my main Peugeot dealer because they're trustworthy, they get it right and I pay £24 a month and that goes into a pot and at the end of the year I get my service and MOT for nothing and then all I have to pay for is any extras that aren't under the scheme so um, it'll cover all the basics of a, of a standard service and an MOT um, but if if it needs like tires or there's something very specific then um, then that comes as extra but it's not very often I get extras and very often things like tires I would get um, warnings on when I go for my MOT and they'll tell me how many months I need to come back in or what mileage I need to come back in to get them done so they're usually not part of uh, a service anyway so I'll have that I'll get that done and my MOT always falls at the same time as when I am going home so I always try to get it done the week before I go, in case of any problems. Uh, so I think I'll probably be in there in two or three weeks. That'll be a little trip out, won't it? Go and sit in Peugeot for three hours. Or if the weather's nice, we'll go and have a walk about the town. The only way I'm going to get the UC people off my back with this ridiculous cleaning work is simply to up my income in other areas. I mean, at the moment, I don't have to hit the minimum income floor. It works differently when you're on a protected year. So come August, if I'm still on, on the scheme, I'll have to be hitting certain targets. Um, and if to do that, that means me having to take like a PAYE job or something. I'll just quit UC because their minimum income floor is more than I need. It's like three or four hundred pounds a month more than I need and I don't need the pressure. It's not worth it. So I'll just focus on increasing the income streams that I have. I need to work more on my business. I've been really bad at the marketing and the advertising lately because I hate marketing and advertising and because I've been focusing more on other things like doing YouTube takes up so much time but is becoming a really profitable way to work. So um, I'm happy to put more effort into YouTube for now if it's increasing my income and then once it settles into a uh, more of a thing I can start looking at the business a bit more um, and it's just having the time to do it because you need to sit down and really focus on certain sectors and I'm constantly jumping around doing you know I'm doing a bit of YouTube and doing a bit of surveys and doing a bit of market research and doing a bit of cleaning so I'm always hopping here there and everywhere so I don't get a lot of time to just stop and go right I'm going to spend today is going to be just doing marketing and advertising or exploring new ways of 
uh, advertising my business because I just get so distracted by other quicker, easier ways of making money. And of course a lot of it is thanks to algorithms and Google and God knows what else. That some of it, some of it is out of your control. Um, you're fighting against the system, but I have noticed that um, my items are appearing in Google Shopping more now. And there have been some updates to some of the, the online shops that I use within Shopify and I think it's helping. Um, and now I'm actually getting sales through the Shopify store, that may well be helping as well because it's seeing actual movement. So I don't know. The problem is you just get the hang of how to do something like SEO, keywords, hashtags, and then they change the strategies so Instagram will change the way it works, Etsy will change the way it works, Google will change the way it works, and then you have to re-look at everything and see whether you need to change everything again. So it's a constant battle of keeping up. If I had the money, I would pay somebody to just do all of that stuff for me because I don't feel very inclined to learn it because it's, I just don't like it. I find it a really thankless task. Um, you know, there's certain things that I love to do. I love to do finances and business and stuff like that. Marketing and advertising are not my thing. And especially when you know that something you do in three months is going to be obsolete because they've changed the way everything works again. <sighs> drives me mad. Anyway. Right, that's the car booked in three weeks time. Apparently the service package is due to go up this year because you get them every three years. Um, but they reckon it's only going to be about 10, 15 quid. I hope so because I'm getting pretty bored of everything going up this year. Right, so time to head home. It's almost three o'clock and I am blooming starving. See you next time. I wasn't going to record anything today. It's Thursday. But um, I've just been past that little cafe that I get cheap stuff from. I wanted to show you what I got. last be the rest of the year. <sighs> anyway, I thought I'd just show you that. Speak to you soon. Bye. Morning. It's Friday. <sighs> I had a 
great plan for today. I'm going to the cinema. I'm going into town. I'm going to watch a film. <laughs> and the weather is the wettest I've seen it all week. It is tipping down. And it's not even just rain. There's sleet as well. And they did say it might snow this weekend. Anyway, I'm still going because I don't know how long this film is going to run for. I think it's been going a week. But it's not like a major blockbuster, so I don't know how long it's going to be on for. So I'm going to go. I've got an umbrella. I don't park in the city because I don't pay for parking. Um, so I'm going to park where I normally park. And then I have to walk for about half an hour to the cinema, which uh, means I might get a bit wet, but it's not really windy. So I'm taking my little fold up brolly, which I can put in my bag. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I won't get drenched. We'll see how we get on. weather is horrific but I had my heart set on this today this is what I planned for my week and I'm determined to stick to the plan and then that will finish up this um, <laughs> this entry on YouTube and of course today is the 1st of March we are in a new month so that means there's other stuff I need to do. Uh, I need to do a little bit of a financial roundup. It's not too much on it. Uh, but I'll save that for another post because there's like some renewals and some insurances and stuff that I'm going to mention. I don't think I'm going to get a lot of filming done when I'm walking around in town because this weather is absolutely horrific. Not good. I'm going to the cinema because I get free tickets. So I, um, I have a current account with Lloyd's that I've had for a few years now and it's a Club Lloyds account so every year on the anniversary of the opening of your account you get a perk and there's things like magazine subscriptions and a few things like that and the only one that I really thought oh I'll have that is six free cinema tickets a year and you have to use it at the cinema that you pick so um, there's a particular cinema I have to go to to use it but it's not a big deal and it's only six tickets but I've actually found it really hard to use six tickets a year because there aren't that many good films to watch really but I'm going to see Wicked Little Letters which is the new film with Olivia Coleman in it and it's based on a true story it's set in the 1920s and it's basically about um, someone who starts getting uh, like poison pen letters from somebody and apparently it's quite sweary but I would imagine sweary 1920s and Olivia Coleman is quite funny and it is supposed to be quite funny so I'm looking forward to that because uh, I like her and she's really good at funny. She's a remarkable actress actually. I've seen her in all sorts of things. Um, so our, the early days of Olivia Common that I remember is Greenway and she was great in that. And she's been in some of the, um, the Simon Pegg, Nick Frost type films. She was in Hot Fuzz. Um, She's done some 
very wild and eccentric stuff like the favorite which was great i love that she's done really depressing stuff like the father which i once i think i saw it last year really painful to watch and i could never watch it again really hard to watch um and then some of her earlier stuff that i've also seen was um tyrannosaur which was <laughs> quite a terrifying film look it up if you can get it tyrannosaur with olivia coleman oh my goodness that was one hell of a film so she demonstrates this amazing range of serious and ridiculously funny and seemingly does them all effortlessly and it's quite funny actually because when you see her interviewed or something apparently she's quite she's quite nervous she's quite nervous in public and i think that she just likes to hide at home when she's not working but she's one of these actors these actresses that once they get in front of the camera they just go into actor mode and it's funny how people seem so open and so eccentric and so uh, to put all their emotions out there on camera could be so quiet and so so meek in private it's like this, the confidence only comes when the camera's on it's really weird I find that hard because I've never really been confident in front of people and that's again another, another reason for me doing this channel was that I wanted to make myself be okay about being on camera because I never do selfies um, I never do anything like that because I feel like oh so subconscious mustn't do that don't look perfect and then I realized that nobody cares once I discovered that you can leave the house without wearing makeup which was a long time ago now um, it takes away all that that mask that you think is protecting you people don't care if you when you're out and about walk around if you live in normal society look at everybody look at all the women and count how many aren't wearing any makeup and are you judging them for that? Are they judging you? I think it's great. I don't have to wear makeup every time I go out. My mum puts makeup on every day whether she's going out or not. And it takes her a while to get organised. So by lunchtime, mum's ready for her day. So she's faffed around and done her makeup and her hair and make the beds and all that sort of thing it's lunchtime and i find it extraordinary that, that that's what retirement is <laughs> even when she's going over the road to help with the grandkids in the morning because mum goes over the road now and um it won't be happening for much longer so my sister-in-law takes the eldest two to school and then mum stays with the little one and it's not for very long but mum enjoys it but she has to be over there about eight o'clock in the morning. So she's getting up at like six o'clock to make sure she's got her makeup on before she goes over. As if her three-year-old granddaughter gives a shit about her wearing makeup. But that's a self-conscious thing. And that's, I think, probably a generational thing. I mean, my mum was, my mum's getting on towards 80 now. And uh, I don't think it's a generational thing. You know, there was a time when a woman would never leave the house without a hat on. Okay. That sort of thing. Anyway, this, this is my very wet drive into town. I'll catch up with you in a bit.
Wow, <laughs> I eventually found some parking. <sighs> some days you come here and there's parking everywhere. Other days, it's a real job. If you can't get on the main through fare, very often, if you look on the back streets, because there's no parking restriction on a lot of these back streets. I've parked here before. So, what do I need to do now? I'm going to have to put a hat on. <laughs> I was hoping to be a hatless day today, but it's uh, it's not great. Oh, damn it. Never mind. This is absolutely treacherous, this weather. Definitely going to get wet in some shape or form. But I have plenty of time to get in. Always leave extra time in case of parking problems. Right. Do I look ready for the rain? Tiny brolly. I hate dragging a massive brolly around if I don't need to. Keys, water. That's the lot. Right, I'm going to switch you off because there's no way I'm going to record while this is going on. No chance. Catch you later.
just leaving the cinema. You can probably tell from the look on my face, that was brilliant. <laughs> so funny. It's very sweary. And the casting was brilliant. Definitely worth a few hours of my time. Rain stopped. <laughs> On the way back from the cinema, I stopped off at my favourite fabric shop. I don't go very often. Because I'll know I'll spend money. And it's, uh, I buy fabrics for my business. And as business is slow, it's kind of hard to justify the spend but I haven't been into town and to that shop in such a long time I thought uh, I don't know when is the next time I'll be back so I wouldn't come in here especially just to go to the fabric shop it's too much of a journey for that anyway so I spent 46 pounds on fabric which should make me look at the size of the pieces I got at least 500 pounds worth of dresses and I got some lovely colours colours I haven't used before so once I start really feeling creative again something to work with which is rather good isn't it Ooh. right not done good today two things out the way one very good cinema visit if you like sweary stuff or you like eccentric stuff and if you like Olivia Coleman go and see Wicked Little Letters now showing probably at cinema near you um, Uh, yeah, so now and having stocked up on fabric, which means I'm under no pressure now, which is fantastic, I am heading, well, not heading home, I'm going home. I think I'm going to nip in via Sainsbury's because there's a freebie on one of my apps. I quite fancy it. Offered in selected stores, which probably means it isn't there, but we'll go and have a look. They're driving past the store anyway, so it's no biggie. Really. I'm starving. If I buy them, I'll probably eat them on the way home. Good to go without food for a bit because I'm a bit of a grazer. I never get this hungry in the morning when I'm doing like intermittent fasting. If I, if I have breakfast, that's it, I'm off. So I had breakfast before I came out because I left home at nine, just before nine. And knowing that I won't have lunch, I'll have breakfast instead. But now I'm absolutely starving. So let's have a little day out. I'm not a massive fan of coming into town. It's, uh, I don't mind it every so often. It's doable in small chunks, but I couldn't be here every day, like working here and commuting. Oh my goodness. It's, uh, it's a bit hit and miss at the moment. There's a lot of empty shops. There's a lot of scaffolding where a lot of places are getting refurbished. Um, certainly the, the route that I take from where I parked to where the cinema is, is pretty ropey. It's trash, there's a lot of empty shops, there's a lot of graffiti. Um, 
and it's only just off the main shopping street so it's not like it's back streets but it's not um, it doesn't look great and it looks even worse in the wet weather but yeah I don't mind the odd the odd day in can be fun I wonder how many steps I've done today Freebie in Sainsbury's. These were two pounds eighty five. Four in the box. Look at the size of that thing. Four of those for two pounds eighty five. Probably just because they're gluten free or whatever they are. Nut free, dairy free, gluten free. Um, I bought them because they were free, not because they were gluten free. I will eat anything. Um, I used £2.50 worth of Nectar Points and uh, so I will get that two eighty five back. So I'll get most of my, I'll get all of my £2.50 in Nectar Points back, which is pretty cool. And a little voucher came out at the end, uh, double points at next uh, Sainsbury's when I next buy fuel I was going to go buy fuel today I've got to spend 45 or more I'm down to the last bar on my petrol so I'm going to wait a couple more days because I'll be coming past here again on Wednesday and I'll get my petrol then and I might, I don't think I'm going to hit 45 pounds you never know Petrol prices are really starting to go up. Uh, I haven't looked exactly, but I think it was about 130 when I filled up at Christmas, and it's now 142. So that is not good. An actual fact, I filled up. When did I fill up? Right at the beginning of January before I headed home. So that's only gone up. That's gone up that much in two months. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on at the moment. Right, home time. Process the receipt for that. Um, that freebie? That came from Green Genie, by the way. That'll be coming through on the PayPal at some point. Haven't been very very many good deals on the cash back app so far this year. And again, this might be all to do with the tax year because they, they have budgets to hit and if they've already reached their budgets and they're waiting for April to come round for their new budgets for advertising and marketing to be announced, that might be why it's slowed up quite a lot. Um, but you do go through quite phases and then phases where it's like everybody's got a freebie. So we just keep checking the apps and we grab things as and when they turn up. We saved a few pounds last month. Actually my food bill has been really high this month. I spent, last year I physically spent a total of 120, 128 pounds I think it was last year on food because once you've done all the cashbacks and rolled over all the things that haven't been eaten because that's how I do that amount, anything that doesn't get opened um, 
rolls on to the next month and that becomes part of next month's budget. So there are lots of things that I will buy during the course of a month which won't be eaten. So if I've picked up tins, packets, uh, and I'll pick up any cheap deal when I see it. And things like dried noodles and tins of whatever will last for ages and they're good backup so that when I have bad months where there aren't many yellow stickers, that gives me something to fall back on. So I roll those over and I discount them off of that month's food bill because I haven't physically eaten it, although I have theoretically spent the money. But at some point it will become part of the food budget because once I then open that item or use it, I'll consider that spent on that month I've actually physically used it, if that makes sense. Um, and it gives me a literal, um, a literal spend so I know what I'm actually physically spending and physically eating in a month as opposed to just whatever gets bought and then sits there you know tins might sit there for over a year so I might as well be very accurate in terms of what I'm actually physically eating so that's why I came out with that small amount for food shopping in 2023 um, my, my physical spend i.e. my eat spend so far this year I think was 25 pounds in January and it was 32 for February which is really high because that's like about a quarter of my total food bill for the last year however I need to I guess cut back a little bit on things um, and I can stop buying certain things if I decide you know let's cut out all the bread, all the, um, and just stick to buying things that I really, really need, like the vegetables, because I have quite a lot in my, in my stash now, but vegetables are definitely still low. Not getting as many gift cards, which also doesn't help, because a lot of what I buy is on gift cards, therefore is free food. And most of the survey sites I now use tend to give me PayPal cash rather than gift cards. I do have a gift card coming in the next week from uh, a marketing research type survey that I did. On, I had to watch a documentary and then rate it as I watched it and then answer questions afterwards. And I got a £10 gift, uh, gift card for that. So I'm just waiting for that to come through. and then I will have £10 to spend on food and I will probably go to Sainsbury's because I can use the gift card, get the food and pick up some points along the way. Sounds good. But also if I get cash back freebies or discounts I can use gift cards to pay for those and then claim the money back against those and then I've actually turned the gift card back into cash as well. So there's all kinds of ways that you can make things like that work in your favour. You just have to do the maths. And I think it's the doing the maths which is what people get too lazy about. You, know, you do have to crunch your numbers and think about what you're doing. But it's worth it. You know, if you can spend 128 quid a year on food, why wouldn't you? But they, they, the retailers and supermarkets prey on our laziness that we just won't be bothered, that we'll just want to uh, go for the convenience. Right, back. So hungry, it's crazy. I'm gonna have a peanut butter bagel. I've missed lunch, but I can't wait till dinner. Good day out. That's the end of this vlog update. Don't know when this will be coming out. It won't be long. I've got gaps to fill. See you later. Bye.